this is called a, a net metering system. Um, actually, fairly simple, um, but you definitely need to have a, a licensed electrician to work with this because you're working with some very high, high voltage. So, Here's the challenge. Build a house that produces as much electricity as it uses. Net zero. To make it work, the meter needs to measure electricity coming in and going out. Net metering. It's a simple idea, but it's also far different from the way that a typical house works. We're going to look at two houses in Nebraska that are designed to be net zero. Zenith is a project acronym for Zero Net Energy Test House. The Zenith House in Omaha is a research project of the University of Nebraska. Its planning, design, and construction has engaged dozens of faculty and hundreds of students in the fields of architecture and engineering. My biggest interest area is energy savings and indoor air quality, okay? But we're also looking at constructability. The, we look at our, our, what we call our floor trusses. The spacing of these floor trusses are different on different levels of the house. Also, how they're hung on the wall is different. If you go down the basement, you'll see on one end there'll be a brick ledge, okay? On the other end, there'll be a Simpson strong tie because it is a test house, okay? And we've got a lot of different features in this house. We've got photovoltaic laminates. The noise you hear in the background is our geothermal wells being born. Geothermal is heat from the earth. Geothermal-based heat pumps are very efficient for heating and cooling, which is typically the largest demand for energy in a home. The geothermal is the best system out there for your house. It's the most economical system. The fact that there's no outside units there, you don't have noise pollution outside. With the two-stage technology and the variable speed motors that are available in the geothermal, it's probably one of the most comfortable systems you'll, you'll have in your house also. There are different approaches to geothermal. The Zenith house is using a well for the heat pump. The net zero house outside of Lincoln uses a heat exchanger that is sunk into a pond. Instead of doing a, a typical ground loop, we're using a water plate system. We have a stainless steel plate that is submerged in the bottom of the pond, and this plate actually has a PVC float attached to the top of it. This is a, two, a plate for a two-ton system. And the plate stands upright at the bottom of the pond, and so we're using it as just an exchange media. We, we circulate a, a food-grade glycol or food-grade antifreeze through that system. So we're not using the pond water, we're just using the temperature of the water. And so we're using that to both, both heat and air condition our homes. The geothermal heat exchanger can also be used to support the heating of domestic hot water. As the, home, as the system is taking the heat from inside of the home, we actually preheat the hot water for our water heater. So in the summertime, it, our hot water is almost free. So that's kind of a side benefit of a geothermal system. They have what they call a de-superheater in them. And especially in the summertime, when you're looking to take the heat from the house and get rid of it, dump it in the ground outside, what it does is it takes that heat and it dumps it into the hot water system for your house and essentially provides you with most of your domestic hot water in the summertime. The heating and cooling system is made even more efficient by a well-insulated and tightly constructed building envelope. We did do some unique things in this home where we actually did a what's called a flash and bad insulation system. So we actually increased the insulation levels in the walls, the attics, and even underneath our slabs in the basement. So I would call this home kind of a super insulated home. So we've got insulated concrete forms around a complete basement and three quarters of the first floor. And then we got two by six frame. On the other side of that uh, frame then is inch and a half of foam with a stucco exterior. And then on the inside, we're gonna have closed cell and open cell spray foam insulation. Homes that are well insulated and tightly sealed can trap stale air and moisture. To address this problem, energy recovery ventilation is required. This is what I call our lungs of our home. This is an energy recovery ventilator. It's a completely balanced system. So we're, we're taking out of the home exactly the same amount of air that we're bringing in. Um, the two airs do not intermix. Um, the airs go through what is called a condensate wheel, and it, it's somewhat like a radiator. So we uh, recover 80% of the energy off the air that we're taking out of the home. So we're either preheating or pre-cooling the air, depending on the time of year, the air that's coming in. So that's the only energy efficient way to bring fresh air into your home. 
Tight construction, super insulation, and energy recovery ventilation create standards of construction embraced by green building professionals. But to make it net zero, the house has to be able to produce energy as well. If we actually have 48 of these panels, this is a 190 watt BP panel. Uh, the arrays are all equal groups and the panels just pigtail and plug together. So um, it's a fairly simple system. It does require an electrician, um, somebody with some experience to, to make all of your electrical connections because the minute these things are out in the sun, they are creating current and, and DC current has a lot of bite to it. So you want to be very, very careful. As an energy producer that is connected to the grid, net metering is required. We, would, we actually go out and we'll change out the meter and put a special what we call a bi-directional meter in, which is a, uh, a meter with two registers on it. So it can register or measure the electric flow from the grid to the house and then from the house to the grid. Net metering systems are tied to the electrical grid and are designed to shut down if the grid goes down. Basically, we're using Norris Public Power as our battery. So if the power goes off, we are off grid and we are out of power also because our system shut down. Uh, I still think it's a win-win. Norris Public Power is, is extremely reliable on their systems. Uh, this subdivision, everything is underground, so obviously we're not subject to ice. The house systems are monitored and controlled at a central and smart interface. Um, this home monitors all your energy consumption. This is our energy aspect. So the orange is our energy consumption and our yellow is our production. Uh, so you can program um, everything from your security, your sound, and your energy usage right through this system. The very design of the house also affects the amount of energy it uses and is able to produce. Roof pitch, house orientation, and other design issues are all considered for the impact on the comfort and efficiency of the home. The south side of the house is going to be the most comfortable. It's, uh, we've, we know from studies that lighting already affects um, how people feel. On the south side of the house, we have all the, the rooms that people live in. On the north side of the house, I placed all the rooms that people don't spend a lot of time in, which will be the bathroom, the laundry room. Everything's calculated as far as what the window, the sun angle would be at certain times of the year. Yeah, in this case, we, we used an overhang of two foot six, which is definitely deeper than most houses are. And, and during the hottest part of the, the summer, it was almost this whole entire wall was designed to be in shadow. While you may see quite a few windows on the front of the house, there, um, there's really only three that are functional, which is the one that's uh, straight ahead of us in the master closet, and then the two, one's a laundry room and one's a bath, uh, and that's it. The rest of the windows are simply aesthetic for aesthetic reasons, and because we knew this would be facing north, we wanted to be able to uh, make the house look in scale correctly and just make it a, a beautiful house to look at. This, the house design was meant to be mainstream design so that most people would like it, but it was also meant to be a mainstream construction, on both on the outside and the inside, so it could be replicated easily. Building a home today is a lot more complicated than it was 10 years ago. It, it's more of a systems approach to building. You have to look at all the systems and how they interact with each other and how they operate together. The net zero houses represent the leading edge in design, materials, and technology for home construction. Power companies, education institutions, government agencies, home builders and material suppliers are all working together to learn more about making homes as safe, comfortable, and energy efficient as they possibly can. And with net metering, energy producing homes become a part of the energy grid as a new kind of customer a customer that supplies energy as well as uses it.